It's a cold, wet, miserable, windy day. I'm going fishing, why not? I've heard on the vine, and that vine being Facebook report page, there's some salmon have been getting caught off Frankston Pier. Now, I'm not gonna make it sound like oh, I'm a big expert, I know there's heaps of salmon getting caught there and I'm going off my local knowledge. I only know because I saw it on Facebook, but I'm gonna go down there anyway and have a go. I've got about a 45 minute window because I've gotta go down to Langroan and it's not far from it. So I'm gonna sneak the rod in the car, I've got a box of lures and that's all I'm taking. So I guess we'll see how we go. It's gonna be very windy down there, but um, I'm still gonna try my luck. The things we do to try and get a fish on this show, I tell you, it is blowing an easy 40 knots out here, I reckon. 30, 40 knots. I'm nearly getting blown off the pier. We're only halfway down here in Frankston Pier. I don't know if I want to walk to the end. Because the waves are so violent here, you don't really have to do much with your lure. When you're using a salmon lure, you normally have to jig them up and down because that's what the salmon want to see. They'll come up and they'll just smash it because they think it's a bait fish. But here, I'm just cruising it through the waves because they're rolling and they're twisting and they're turning. And that's exactly what it's going to look like to them as they go through. So that's if there's any here. They were yet here yesterday. Were they here today? I don't know. The thing about salmon schools is they'll move really fast. They'll be in one place, 20 minutes later, they'll be in another. So. They could be up here at Mount Martha for all I know. But they move, so I mean, you stick it out. If you're in an area and you've heard they're around, give it a good few hours, because there's a good chance they'll come back. The wind's really helping the cast here. I've just casted and it's gone all the way down to my backing with the mono backing behind the braid. That's a lot of line out. <laughs> that was great. I was just thinking, no, nah, there wasn't much around. Jeez, he wants to fight too. Must be a half decent sized fish. <sighs> He's swimming around. There he is. He is too. He's a pretty good one. Oh, oh, oh I dropped him right there. That's all right. If there's one, there's generally more. He was a pretty good salmon. I reckon he was getting close to a kilo, so. He just, he just, they shake their heads as they come up and bang. He smashed that out. But he was, um, he was a good fish. Wow. I hope he's still down there. Oh, come on, let me get one. I'm only here for half an hour, so we haven't got long. So we lost one fish at the pier, we just need one on the pier. Oh, what a shame that was.
he fought me the whole way in. He wanted to go under the pier. I'm like, I've got a, I've got an eight foot rod, so I can hold it out from the pier a little bit. I'm using the air surf, the Robex air surf. They're very light and they're very strong. Come on, one fish, one fish on the pier. That's all I want. Great thing about Australian salmon, they hit hard. You know when you got them on, there's no, oh, maybe I think that was a bite. You know. Oh, oh, I'm on, I'm on. Oh, he hit it and then he dropped it. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, no. Where are you, bugger? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's down there. Come on. Oh, get it, you bugger. Oh, he come up for it. I saw him come up for it. Oh, we're just about to go. Oh, no. Where are you, bugger? You're not far. Oh, he come straight up for it. Oh, this is cruel. Well, that's twice I've seen him come straight to the pier for me, Lua. Which means I'm just going to retrieve nice and slow with a couple of jerks here and there. I want it to sink to the bottom because they must be a bit lower than I originally anticipated. Oh, he just smashed that hard too. Yep, he smashed it hard. Come through and went whack. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Oh, come on, baby. Here we go. Have a look at this in the water. Uh, I'll bring him up. Yes. Oh, he dropped off right there. <laughs> look at him. Look at you go, mate. Calm down. <laughs> Oh, I got him right at the edge of the pier. This guy's been eluding me, something fierce. There we go. <laughs> Arabus Strutter, Australian Salmon, Frankston Pier. They're not big, but they fight hard on light gear and they are great fun and exciting to catch. You know what, I did come down here to try and catch a few for some shark bait, but I'm sure I'll get some off the 90 mile when I get down there, so. But um, I'm gonna let this guy go back in the water. Mate, thanks for the fight. Thanks for jumping off my hook a few times and back you go. <laughs> awesome, that's what I came here for. Now, one last cast. <laughs>Hi guys, now I'm down at a place that we all know very well called Lang Lang Beach at the foreshore. Now a little while ago I was down at the Bass Kilcunder Bass Fishing Festival and I ran into a fella named Mike. Mike, how are you going? Thanks for joining us on Ozfish today. Thanks for having me. No worries. Now I was, I was watching him do some demonstrations on the beach of this little gadget and I thought, what has he got there? Now mate, you've come up with a great concept of casting without holding your finger on the line. Yeah, that's right. Both hands on the rod firmly. Yep. No line to release, it happens automatically with the, with the device. Right, and, and it's called the Cast Master. Cast Master Accelerate, we call it. Accelerate. Well, I'll tell you what, you can get a lot further cast. I saw these guys just piffing out. I reckon one nearly went over the San Remo Bridge, mate. I was uh, aiming for the San Remo Bridge, yeah. <laughs> now, um, as a lot of you well, well know that I use a, a, a rig called the Romix rig, which uh, improves our cast by, you know, a lot more because you've got no um, restriction in bait and all that going together. If you've seen the show, you'll know the rig I'm talking about. Um, now this, mixed in with this rig, I'm gonna get a lot further casting. Yep. But this is not just for your professionals, this is mainly sold at your weekend fisher. You're, fish you're occasional angler, yep. Begin it's ideal for beginners. If someone, if yep. you've got a young 15 year old yep. kid you want to introduce to fishing or fishing it's for surf fishing, beach, yep, of course. Beach, rocks, pier, yep. Um, it's a terrific addition to a tackle box, yeah. Well, uh, my, um, my missus, she loves fishing. She struggles a little bit on the surf with a surf rod. Um, because it was something new, she hasn't done it a lot. I reckon this is perfect. 
It's what it's made for. Because exactly. worn it around, don't have to worry about it. You just set and forget and cast as far That's as you can. Right. A series of settings here so we can adjust the device to yep. suit the particular strength of the angler. Yep. Like yourself, we might bring on a bit more tension before this trips. Yep. Uh, for Kim, we might just back it off that little bit yep. so it'll trip. A lot easier as you... It allows the angler to get as much power out of the rod as they can. So you adjust it to your own strength? Yeah. And with the instructions we say you'll, you'll need to spend 15 minutes yep. to find the setting that suits you. Once you yeah. find that setting, that's it. it's a set and forget. You're ready to go. That's right. <laughs> I'll tell you so, what, mate, this is ingenious. And an Australian invention, which is always a good thing. Yep, all Australian, made in Australia. Excellent. Well, um, now you've got a website. We have got a website. Now, I, I really would advise anyone even interested in something like this would need to go to your website, which is? CastmasterAustralia.com.au. Yep. .au. .au. It's, um, You'll see that on the screen right here. It's got the um, it's got the uh, video. Yep. A uh, couple of ladies I work with casting never cast yep. in their life. Yep. At the third cast, they're looking at 60 and 70 meter casts. Wow. Uh, we might have to get one of these for Jesse, my co-host. <laughs> well, it'll improve his fishing. Because sure. I've, seen, I've yeah. seen him do some, a lot of dodgy casts, mate. <laughs> Mind you, on, on the other side of the camera, when the uh, the things you don't see, we uh, we all have our days where we don't cast very well. <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah. Once, once you master this, once you, once you understand how it works, yep. um, you're putting the bait where the fish are. That's our catchphrase. Yep. Cast master puts you where the fish are. Excellent, mate. Well, well done on a great idea and a great invention. Now, please go to the website, have a look, check it out. Even if you're a professional thinking, oh, I don't need this, I can cast all right. I can tell you what, have a go. At least have a look and see how it works because if you can get an extra 10 metres out on your cast, it's going to improve your fishing. Particularly from rocks when you're casting over kelp or into a uh, into a gutter. And a the gutter. same on the surf, yep. into the gutter. That's right. There's no good fishing where the fish aren't. Well, we're here at Lang Lang and this is the sort of spot you want to get out as far as you can because the gummies are coming in. It's I can tell you right, mate, look at the water. <laughs> we should, we should, we're talking too much. We should be fishing. We should be fishing. Yeah. Right, this is going to be my very first shot trying to use it on this rod. I did use it on your one down at um, San Remo Fishing Festival, mate. That's right. And it uh, surprised me a lot and that's why we're here today. So. <laughs> That just improved my cast by 10 metres. Easy. Easy. You're in the trough now. That's great. That's where the fish are. Well, that took me six tries. And it got me to the perfect cast. Now that tension, now you know. Now I've got to reel it in. Now you understand that tension, <laughs> that's where yeah. you go each time. Yeah, so if it's not going as far as you'd like, just tighten it up a little bit. It's all explained in the, uh, on the DVD, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure it wasn't a fluke, so I'm going to do one more. To make sure I've got that. Oh wow! <laughs> that went for miles. Now, as you can see, that's braid on my line. There's not much left on that spool. That's taking nearly half my spool. That's what it's designed for, Michael. Well, it wasn't a fluke. This works amazing. Guys, you've got to get down to the website, just get on your computer, check it out, go through instructions, see how it all works. You've seen a bit of it here, but uh, go have a look at it online and order one for yourself. Anyone who's ever fished Western Port probably wonders what, when, when you drive past Turretin Airport, what this vessel behind me is. Um, I've done a little bit of research because I'm quite interested. It's, um, it's a vessel known as the Edwina May. Now, there's an interesting story behind the Edwina May. It was owned by a gentleman by the name of William Curtin, who bought it to extend the boat because he ran a, a shipping business up in Darwin. Now, he and his son were working on it. They put a six metre section in the middle and extended the boat. 
Um, while they were working on it, William's son went up to Darwin and was working on a ship somehow during Cyclone Tracy. He was uh, tragically lost at sea and basically beyond that, William abandoned the project. He said he didn't want to do it and just, so she's abandoned. So it's been sitting there since 1974. It's a little bit of history. So yeah, that hopefully explains it to you next time you drive past and you look over and see this uh, poor old girl, which is alleged to be haunted. Today we're heading down to Coronella Boat Ramp. We're going to head out and try and get a couple of target species. We want to try and get maybe some whiting and some squid. A bit of bait collection and maybe a bit of a feed as well. Got a good mate on board named Rob. He's going to try and help us catch some of these target species. And check this out. The stingrays have shown up. These guys are cool. You quite often see them on a nice day swimming around the pier and the pylongs of Coronella Boat Ramp. Such graceful creatures swimming around looking for a bit of food. So off we go, heading to the beautiful estuary system, Western Port. Today we've just come out to try and catch a feed. We're just trying to get a few squid and a few whiting, mate. Sound good? Sounds good, mate. Sounds good. All right, we're gonna. We're just gonna go up to place in Coronet Bay here, it's called Reef Island. We're just going to do a few drifts along the shallows in about two or three metres of water. We're armed with some black magic squid snatchers. I've got the white and the black ones, my favourite. And uh, yeah, so we're going to do a bit of a drift along this, this bank here and we'll see how we go. We're going to go right up to Reef Island, drift all the way back because we've got an out, out running tide. Gonna go back. Definitely the target species that we wanted, but he's really little. Even if he was just on size, he's only thin, so I'm not going to throw him out the back of the boat because if there is a school down there, I don't want him to spook him, so I'll throw him out the front of the boat here. And off he shoots. Right, one flathead, one whiting. Both very small, we just need to get him a little bit about that big. hit two of our target species mate, whiting and squid. He's only a little guy, but we need some bait for later on tonight and he's a perfect size. So he's gonna go straight. I'm gonna try and keep him alive as long as possible. We've got a little live bait tank. I'm gonna throw him in that. Very small. That's all right, that's good. Perfect bait size, just what we want. Oh, he's actually grabbed the back of the jig. Oh, where's it? Oh, he's not happy. Sorry, Rob. I caught your squid, mate. <laughs> yeah, sorry, mate. But um, as long as one of us got it, that's the main thing. This guy, what they'll normally do is I'll ch attack the head of the squid jig. So if you flick this squid jig over here, you'll see he's hit the head of this because there's a bit of the material's been ripped. Now he's hit the head and he's sucked onto it and we thought we had him hooked and then it's turned the jig around and he spat it straight away. And then I threw mine down and we just pegged him. So, but anyway, look, main thing is we got him in the boat, mate. He's only little, but he's gonna make a very good bait. Alrighty, I just got this guy too. Don't squirt me, be nice. Oh, there we go. A little bigger than the last one. Oh, we just dropped his ink too. Right, right, right where I sit. What do you reckon, Rob? Pretty critter. He's trying to bite me. Oh, did you get a bite then, mate? Yeah, something. Alright, let's throw him in the uh, live bait tank. Well, the afternoon sea breeze kicked in, so we put away the squid jigs. We went over to a little reef I know and dropped some baits down. It wasn't long before we were pulling up a few little cool reef fish, had a bit of fun, then we headed back to the boat ramp to drop one mate off and pick another mate up, Scotty Marshall. 
with a few squid and some fresh bait on board, we're now going to go out and target a few Western Port gummy sharks. Okay, so we've been out. Mate, you got a few different species? We didn't smash the whiting lot, we thought. Got a little bit choppy out there, so we hit a different mark, and um, your sister caught a snapper, mate. Yeah. She caught a wrasse. We got a few squid. Well, that was one of our target species, so we're dropping one mate off and we're picking another one up. Scotty? How do? How you going, mate? Good, yourself? Yeah, good, buddy, good. We're going to head out and, uh, I don't know, mate, the weather's really bad on the other side. It's blowing a pretty strong easterly, so we might stay in the sheltered part of, of Coronella here, because we did end up in Coronet Bay before, but it's just, yeah, it's really choppy, so we'll stay safe. We might just scoot around here and see what we can come up with. Sounds good. All right. All right, Rob. So back out we head. Staying away from the wind, we decided to stay on the Coronella side. So we head over to one of the many rocky channels that Coronella has to offer, finding the rocky mud bank crops where the gummy sharks on the run outside, which it is now, will be running off those banks, along those channel edges, and hopefully finding their baits along their journey. It wasn't long before the first rod started to twitch. And yes, we caught the first gummy shark, but he was only a puppy. Although when you're waiting in a boat for your rod to buckle, sometimes it is quite entertaining catching these little guys that come in one after another. It keeps us entertained while we wait for that bigger model to come along, find that bait and buckle that rod. They slowly started to get a little bit bigger, but it wasn't big enough. Lucky we had our mate Scott on board to hook into something a little off. bit bigger than Are the we? smaller yep. ones we've been catching. I've got it. Had a, good, had a good run, didn't he? Hey, that's a great hey, effort. Took off around the back of the boat. Well done. That's, a good catch. that's something to be very proud of. Oh, good catch. That is the best eating size gummy shark. Been a while between uh, between fish, so to speak. Yeah, you were just saying, oh, I just wish I could catch a fish because I've been catching little pups all day. And... Yep. Well done, mate. Thank you. Nice effort. 